thanks for your patience in, uh, in, for, in this put together. Oh, thanks for being kind yes. to me. Yeah, yeah, it, I've been very busy, but uh, this is a good time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, let's start. Uh, uh, the Walking Dead final season, uh, first episode, uh, released a few days ago. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, we're happy with it. It's coming along well. Well, um, I'm really waiting to see um, how the Clementine adventure will go to the end. Yeah. Um, Hi, what's your feeling about this? You know, you worked on this game in 2012, and now it's been six years. Yeah. And now it's coming to an end. I know, it's amazing. I actually started even a little earlier. I started at the end of 2011 um, with the first sketches and theme ideas. And so, it, yeah, it's kind of amazing. It's certainly the project that I've spent the most time with and the the different sounds and different themes and characters uh, that I've spent the most time with in my work so far. So uh, it means a lot. And uh, it is it is exciting to see how it's ending and, and to kind of give Clementine the send-off she deserves. Well, um, first question. Uh, when you started interesting in music and when you started composing music for especially with your games, mm -hmm. tell us about it. Oh, just tell. Uh, well, so I um, I always loved music and grew up playing violin and uh, singing a lot, and then got more and more interested in writing music when I was in college at university, and um, uh, started writing more and more. And then when I was getting ready to start thinking about life after college and finding a job, I knew um, I was interested in trying to write music for a living, and I. I, I loved game music, I loved film music. I, I especially liked the idea of writing music to tell, that connects with the story um, yeah. more than writing concert music. And so games were a really good fit for that. And um, pretty early on in my career, I was connected up with Telltale Games as they were starting. And they were, you know, what they were doing was really exciting to all of us. Um, and me especially, because I, I especially like writing that kind of music. I'm happy to write music for other types of games as well. But when there's a story there, that really get, gets me excited and gets gets my attention. So I've, you know, I've really loved working with them and with other narrative um, game companies to to use the music to kind of tell the story and and carry an emotional journey for the characters and all that. Well, um, you worked on so many different games, you know, uh, it's, no. The Walking Dead, yeah. the Dead Zombie Apocalypse World, and The Wolf Among Us with that fairy tale characters in modern world and mm -hmm. even in other games you know and what is common between all of these games that all of them is adaptation you know one from comic one from mm -hmm. tv series and one from another game tell us about the challenges of making music for these types of games you know all of, all of them has a source yeah it's very. It, it, there's a very big difference to writing something for a completely original new thing and writing something that is that that is an existing property like that. And, but even within that, there's there's sort of a difference between, like for example, uh, the Wolf Among Us was an existing comic book, but there wasn't already a, a musical sound associated with it. So even though that was a new, even though that was an existing franchise in a world that already existed in the comics. Creating the score was was more like creating something for a brand new thing, completely original. We we spent a lot of time sitting down thinking about what we wanted that music to sound like and how it should fit in with the art style and the um, that kind of like dark retro feel that that game had. Yeah. Whereas something like you know the Game of Thrones game that we did, uh, which which was really connected to the show and we wanted the music you know we knew the music had to sound like the music that's on the on the tv show so for that it was much more about studying the music um that uh, javadi wrote writes for the show really yeah. getting to know the language that he uses for that and then creating new stuff in that same vein and then there's something like you know the walking dead where you know there was a tv show and there was a comic already but uh but the music that we were wanting to create for it 
wasn't really going to be quite like the, the music for the show. And so that was more of an organic process, again, of figuring out what we wanted that to sound like. But then comparing those yeah, with like Back to the Future or Jurassic Park, where we knew exi- where you know exactly what the music is meant to sound like, um, it's a very different and, different well, kind of process, especially early on. You know, it, 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 the, the planning process is very different if you're doing something for an existing franchise versus something that is more original and new. You know, all of the sources like The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, and the Batman animated series of movies uh, mm-hmm. has great music, but the music you made is great. You know, it was really great, and I really liked it. Um, especially for Batman, mm-hmm. um, there's a movie that made by Christopher Nolan and yeah. has a powerful music scored by Hans Zimmer. Mm-hmm. No, but you made your music, you know, there, there are similarities, but you have a music that right. has its own feelings, you know, it's unique. Mm-hmm. Plus, what the influences you had for making the music for Batman and Game of Thrones and the other games. Yeah, well, so Batman, you know, Batman has sounded like a lot of different things over the years, you know, from... You know, it, there have been so many different versions, you know, in comics and in television and films uh, of what what Batman is and what Batman sounds like. So I, when we were first starting that one out, that was that was a very interesting, tricky one because we knew we didn't want it to be exactly like any one of those other ones. But there were elements of of the Hans Zimmer score for the Christopher Nolan yeah. movies. Elements of the Danny Elfman scores for the earlier Tim Burton movies, and uh, even the music from the animated series, the the cartoon. Um, you know, we we like there were certain aspects of each of those scores that we really liked. So we kind of picked <laughs> picked the elements that we liked out of each of them, and, and I kind of smashed them all into a a new thing and added added some of my own you know sensibilities yeah. as well. But but we we knew we didn't want it to. Um, just remind people of any one of those other previous things because what what Telltale was doing, especially in the second season of Batman, was so different and looking at the characters in kind of a, a, a new, interesting way that was you know certainly not not the same way or certainly not interested in, in telling the same kind of stories that were told in the in the Nolan version or in the um, or in the Tim Burton versions or or in the animated series or any of the earlier versions. Um, and so we, you know, we, we started with the elements that we liked from all those earlier scores and then really just sat down and, and talked about the characters and what what the writers and the directors were going to be doing with them in the, yeah. you know, in the Telltale game. And, you know, what was the most important kind of, what, you know, what were those important, like, emotional uh, posts that we wanted to hit and make sure we were connecting with and connecting with the characters as they were represented in the Telltale game. Why did you choose Telltale games? Um, uh-huh. uh, well, there it, other ways. Yeah. Well, yeah. I we we knew um, when they were you know founding the company, we knew them from our work at Lucas Arts. That yeah. uh, the founders of Telltale started out at Lucas Arts, so yeah. um, I, I knew we knew them. And as I was saying earlier, I, I was always interested in music for narrative storytelling um, games. Most of all, you know, it, it, old adventure games. I grew up playing the old LucasArts, Monkey Island, and Are you yeah, the Tentacle. adventure games. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I love it. Yeah, too. yeah, that was I my really love them. That was my first, my first sort of love, and it was really like you know, especially like Grim Fandango and Curse of Monkey Island. That those were the ones that first caught my attention with the music and realizing, oh wow, that this music is really telling a story and is really you know, a complex thing. So that, that was part of what got me interested in. And so when Telltale was starting out, seeing that that's what they were going to be doing, they were interested in characters and, and story and adventure. Uh, yeah. That was exciting to me. So I, yeah, I, I, I wanted to be part of that and, and they liked what I was doing. And 14 years later, here we are. <laughs> it's for you. Yeah. Um, so I guess one of your influences is Peter McConnell. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's funny, you know, he was one of my, he was one of the people that, uh, whose work I admired the most um, before I was even trying to get into the game uh, music scene. 
and uh, he, he was one of the first people I actually reached out to when I was interested in um, start trying to start doing this work. I got I got to meet him, and now now we're we're friends. It's it's a nice thing, yeah, right. you know. The, the audio community is very small, and you know we we live fairly nearby, and so we when we're not too busy, we try to get together a couple times a year and catch up, and you know. Uh, and yeah, he's, he he's, he's, he's still one of my. He's still one of my. You know, I'm still one of his biggest fans. <laughs> he's still doing. Yeah, me too. No, work. I really like his voice on Monkey Island too, Grim all Fandango, that. most stuff that. Yeah, all the. Games. I mean, his new stuff is is incredible too. Hearth, all the Hearthstone music and exactly, Broken Age, all that. It's just wonderful, and I can't wait to hear what he's doing for Psychonauts too. <laughs> um, what tools? Do you use to make him music? You know, do you use orchestra? Yeah, or just electronic things? Or I do, I do both. I do. It depends a lot on the project, and it depends on the um, the budget that the client has for the project. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of games can't afford to have a full orchestra for everything, um, but some can. And, and like so, with like Telltale with Batman, you know, there, there wasn't a budget for the Batman score to be entirely. Uh, scored with a live orchestra, but there was enough money to, to hire an orchestra to do some of the main themes and um, for both of the seasons, so we were able to do some of that. But as far as my process, um, I will often start just at a piano or with a guitar or with my violin, some, you know, usually with an acoustic instrument, um, just to kind of play around with early ideas. And which instrument I use kind of depends on the style of music that, that the score is going to be in. Um, piano's usually the easiest easiest one for me to kind of just start plunking out ideas and progressions and, uh, you know, melodies. And then, and then I do, you know, we switch over and I start using uh, samplers um, and uh, programming, you know, the music and using samples to kind of make a mock-up version of it, get a sense of it that way, start getting the orchestration more fleshed out. And then um, even when we are going to record with a live orchestra, I'll, I go through that process. And that's pretty typical. You'll, you'll usually, the client will want to hear an approximation of the music before they get it off to the orchestra. So, um, you know, you'll you'll get it up sounding as good as possible with samples, and then um, once it's all approved, then there's the whole process of making the parts and uh, getting the getting the performers booked and scheduled and um, recording them, and then um, and that's how it goes. But yeah, so it, it, and it it varies. It goes everything from some scores which are entirely electronic, and you know, sometimes even just synth scores um, like Wolf Among Us has a lot of yeah, uh, yeah. you know a lot of synthesizer sounds but also some uh, acoustic instruments some flutes and things in there and oh and when possible you know you can replace even if you're not replacing all of the music with a live orchestra you might be able to replace a few instruments yeah. with a live performance and that always you know improves the quality I just got finished doing a, a project uh, not for Telltale but it's, which was more of a, a cowboy uh, country country pop, American country pop yeah. style thing. And so I was I was playing a lot of guitar and violin and um, record, you know, recording myself performing a lot of the parts for that. Um, and so for, for some projects, if you know, if the music is the right kind of music, I can perform them myself. If it's a brass instrument or, or woodwinds, I'm not I'm not very proficient in those. So it will, yeah. I'll usually bring in <laughs> better musicians than me to, to perform those parts. Uh, yeah. But it, it just depends on the project and and what the budget is like and um, what the schedule is like and it's kind of that's just considerations you have to make early on when you're planning how it's all going to get put together. Have you ever worked on something that hasn't made by Telltale Games? No, made by another. Studio? Yeah, I've, I've I've done a lot of work for other uh, other companies here and there. Um, I've been work doing. I ask this because you are famous. For your works for Telltale games, yeah, well, and that and that has been the most most of my work in the past decade has has been for them for sure. I mean, the, especially just in terms of the time uh, it's taken and the amount of music. Partly because the the games that they make, because they're episodic, um, yeah. they're they're kind of stretched out into these longer production times. Where for another game, you might you might only be working on it for a month or two months at a time, and then and then the game comes out a year later. Um, okay. whereas with Telltale, you're, you know, this month you're working on this episode and next month you're working on the next episode. I just, I just, you know, the first episode of, of Walking Dead just came out, but I actually just finished the 
music for the second episode, and I'm now starting work on the music it's for the really third. It's really hard for you, right? So it, 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 it's kind of a rolling schedule, and um, which is great. And also the amount of music that the Telltale games need because they are so cinematic and narrative. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it ends up being more music than another game uh, might need, where you might be just looping the same piece of music more often. Whereas on in Telltale games, the music is changing so so often to you know go with the story uh, and all the little emotional twists and turns that happen. Um, let's talk about video games more. What game are you playing? I play. You tell that you game. play RPG games a lot. I I find myself honestly more more often than not going back to those old adventure games uh, just because I love them. And but I, I you know I I. I don't play as many games as I ought to. I the the last game that I really played quite a bit of and really enjoyed was Breath of the Wild on the Switch, um, the Zelda game. Just very different from the, the types of Zola? music. Uh, I I am yeah, yeah especially especially Breath of the Wild. I feel like they yeah. it, it, the best one in in forever. Uh, it's just and it's, it, I like it because it's a game you can kind of sit with and just do it. You know, it's it's so open you can do whatever you want. You can sit down for five minutes or two hours and uh, kind of just do what you feel like. You, 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 there's no pressure to to necessarily push forward with the main story if you don't feel like doing yeah, that. So really for me, for me I have a two-year-old boy, and so I don't have a lot of free time when I'm not working. Um, and so it's, it's stealing those little moments to play is is, uh, is it's the perfect game for that because you can yeah. just dip in for ten minutes and. <laughs> you like the music. I love the music in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it's really interesting. It, it was surprising to me uh, at first. It's so um, subtle a lot of the time. The, the various, you know, kind of small piano arrangements, and it's, you know, compared to some of the Zelda games, which have just been big, grand orchestral scores for most of the music. I really kind of like how small and delicate the score for Breath of the Wild is. And then, of course, it, it sometimes gets really, really big, and then that's very exciting. That's one of the, you know, one of the most important things I think for musical storytelling is having those levels of dynamics in the score um, make it much more dramatic. You know, it, you can't you can't just be big all the time because then big doesn't feel as big. If you let the if you let the music get really small or even go away for a while and then come back big, then it, it makes a much more dramatic. Nintendo games always have great music. Zelda, they do. Mario, yeah, they do. Metroid. Absolutely. All of them have great yeah. music. Um, what are your influences in video game industry? Do you have any that. favorite composer in this industry? Oh, in the industry uh, for games? I mean, well, Peter McConnell certainly is high on my list still. Um, there's there's a lot of great people doing great work. I mean, uh, Will Roger is a is a, another friend and a, a wonderful kind of younger composer um i mean he's he's my age he's not that <laughs> not that young but uh he he's wonderful mark grisky does incredible work a lot of the star wars um yeah. music he did uh for lucas arts and um gosh i mean I, I, most of the people that come to mind are are, are friends um <laughs> but i you know uh the funny thing about the the you know games industry is it's it's this, it's such a big industry, but especially in the game audio world, it's a it's a pretty small group of people doing the work, um, yeah. and uh, so it's 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 kind of this nice little community where you know even though we're all technically in competition for the work, we're all pretty friendly for the most part and help each other out a lot. Um, I love I love a lot of the Japanese uh, game composers as well. Still, I mean, uh, yeah. Koji Kondo is way up there for me uh, as as far as big heroes go. Yeah, yeah and, um, great. Um, yeah. So, um, a lot of people. A lot of people doing wonderful work. Yeah. Um, do you know anything about Iran? How much you know about Iran? What do I know? I know very little about Iran, really. I mean, aside, aside from the news, which is, you know, just a whole other... Oh, news. <laughs> that's the news. But, uh, you know, uh, very little. I, I I know some um, Persian Americans who who uh, you know grew up there, and uh, but that but really uh, not very much um, 
beyond yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No. I hear, I hear it's a, a beautiful country. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. beautiful. There are so yeah. many beautiful places and cities mm -hmm. like Swahan, Shiraz. Um, yeah. If you can, um, I hope you can come here and visit all these beautiful places. That would be wonderful, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, as a last question, what can you say to the people who wants to be a composer and start in making music for video mm -hmm. games or even movies? What can you say to these people? Yeah. No. I, I have I think a friend that he loves your works for Telltale Games mm -hmm. and he really interested in making music. What right. can what can you say to these people? I would say I will first of all I would say the most important thing to do if you're if you're interested in writing music is to do it often. <laughs> to to play music and, and write as often as you can. Write in different styles as much as you can. Um, at, especially if you're interested in doing it professionally. If you if you're interested in uh, being a composer that gets paid, you yeah. know, to make music for entertainment. It's it's really important to practice in different styles because from one job to the next. Even you know if, if you look at the Telltale games, and that's all just within one com company, but the um, the variation in the style of music from one game to the next is pretty big. And so it's important to ha build the flexibility up to be able to do lots of different styles if you want to be able to get the work that <laughs> to to pay the bills. Um, but then you know beyond that, more and more you know as, whether or not you want to do it professionally. I think um, listen, going and listening to music in a lot of different styles is also really important, and, and uh, n not just not only listening to the music that you already know you like, um, you know, getting excited, exposing yourself to more. I think that's true of all art and all artists. I mean, I think unless you're consuming other people's work and, yeah. and uh, you know, listening and kind of built expanding your own experience, it's very hard to be creative within yourself. Um, so I I try to you know listen as much as possible to new things and go see live music as often as possible also I think is important and and, and play music um, in in whatever you know whatever way you can want to I think those are the most important things um, but just like with anything with writing and other things I think the most important thing is that you're just doing it regularly um, so that it doesn't so that you know sometimes the hardest Part is just getting started with anything, and so if you're if you have a routine and you're doing it every day, then it, then that's just what you're doing. You know, it's no big deal. Usually, once you start, the first five minutes uh, are the, are the hardest part, and then you then you just get going. So if you're doing that every day, then it's no big deal. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was good. Thank you so much. Appreciate. It. Yeah.